Now we're properly recording. So the last time I saw you, we did quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. And now we're moving into graphing quadratic equations. And so I'm going to take you through a few details of it, and then I'll give you a couple of examples, and then we can see if you got any questions after that. Um, so we are graphing quadratic equations. And I'm taking you through a, diff, a very specific way of doing it. There's multiple ways of doing it, but I'm taking you through this specific way because I want you to understand how to find the axis of symmetry and how to find the vertex and what those um, what we were solving for when we were using the quadratic formula. Um, a couple things to note. We've been dealing with things in the form of AX squared plus BX plus C. When we have something like this and it, A is greater than or equal to 1, it's going to graph up. Now, this is that's a terrible graph, but this is at the origin, right, where, where everything centers around 0, 0. It may not always do that. It could graph, you know, something like this or, or here. But the whole idea is that if A is positive, it's always going to graph towards positive infinity, right? If our A is negative, when we graph it, you guessed it, it's going to graph down, right? That's the only difference between a positive quadratic equation and a negative quadratic equation. Um, um, they'll follow the same procedures. It's just one is going to graph down and one is going to graph up. One is going to graph forever towards positive and one is going to graph forever towards negative. Um, and it doesn't matter like with this, this could be plus or minus, this could be plus or minus. All that matters is that A, right, and what's happening to it. And that'll give us our direction. A um, couple things to know about quadratic equations when we're graphing them. One, quadratic equations are symmetric. Symmetric. And we say they're symmetric about the axis of symmetry. And the reason for that is that is like our folding point. We're saying everything that happens on one side of a certain line is going to happen on the other side of this, that line. It's going to be a mirror image. Axis of symmetry. So in this graph right here, the axis of symmetry would be that y-axis going through it, right? That's going to hit our, our center point of this graph. And what it's saying is if we folded this at the y-axis, now, granted, my picture is awful, right? My graph is awful. I'm not, it's, it's not leveled up. But the idea is if we folded it in half on that axis, both sides of the lines would just match up completely. We're saying that if I have a point two away from the axis of symmetry here, say this is one, two away, I would also have one, two away here, one, two away, right? So every point would match on both sides if we folded it down that line. Um, to find the axis of symmetry, We use minus b over 2a. And granted, those are coming from here, right? But a is whatever is the coefficient of our x squared term. 
B is the coefficient of our X term. And we just use those and that will give us where the axis of symmetry is. Um, the other point we need on there is the vertex. The vertex is our high point or our low point, right? If, it, if we have a positive one, it's our low point. If we have a negative equation, it's our high point. So the vertex is our maximum or minimum. right? It is also that turning point for us, right? Um, to find it, because it's a point, it's just an x, y value, and that x value is our axis of symmetry, our minus b over 2a. Our y value, well, we plug in minus b over 2a for x into the problem and we solve it to get y. And I'm going to show you how that works so that you don't have to just re rely on this, this symbolism that I used here. But these are really the only key things that we need to know, right, when we're solving for a, when we're graphing a quadratic equation. So our first steps are going to be solve using the quadratic formula, right? What are we solving for? We're solving for x. Right? The next step we would have would be to find the axis of symmetry. I call it AOS, right? Then we're going to find the vertex. And then we're going to graph. Okay? And that's how you're going to do all of your homework problems, right? It's going to ask you to solve using the quadratic formula. It's specific. Find the axis of symmetry in the vertex and then sketch a graph. Your graphs do not have to be perfect. They can be very, very rough, right? Because all we need to show are these pieces of information on it. So let me uh, see what I got here. For example, if I have x squared minus 10x plus 25. Oh, I grabbed the wrong problem. But that's all right. I can still solve this. <laughs> Equals 1. The first thing I want to do is solve using the quadratic formula. So if I'm going to solve this using the quadratic formula, I have to have it set up in standard form, which means I have to have this set equal to 0. So I'm going to just subtract 1 from both sides. And I get x squared minus 10x plus 24 equals 0. Right? And we're going to identify what our a, b, and c are. Our a is the coefficient of x squared, which is just 1. Our b is the coefficient of x, which is negative 10. And our c is our constant. So equals 24. And then we're just going to plug it into the quadratic formula. And in case you don't remember, it's minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And so we're just going to plug in for those. Minus b, well, that's minus minus 10 plus or minus the square root of b squared. Well, that's negative 10 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, and c, which is 24, all over 2 times a, which is 1. And we're just going to solve that. We're going to find out what our x's are. So this becomes 10, right? Negative times negative is positive. 
This becomes 10 squared is 100 um, minus 24 times 4. Well, that's 96, which is convenient, over 2, which gives me 10 plus or minus the square root of 4 over 2, which gives me 10 plus or minus 2 over two. And when we solve this now, we're there, right? We just need to find out what those two numbers are. So we have 10. I don't know why I've got an extra minus there. 10 plus two is 12 divided by two. Well, that's six. And then I have 10 minus two. Well, that's eight divided by two, which is four. So those are our two X equals, right? X equals six and X equals four. We're going to put that aside for right now. We're going to need it when we graph, but right now we need to find the axis of symmetry. And our axis of symmetry, if you remember, follows a pattern, minus B over 2A, right? And we know what those are. B is negative 10, so it's minus negative 10 over 2 times 1, which is just 10 over 2 which is just five. So our axis of symmetry is five. Our vertex, we know the X value of our vertex is the axis of symmetry. So it is just five. The way we find the Y value is we take our equation, right? The one set equal to zero and we plug in five for the X's. So we have X squared minus 10 X plus 24 equals zero. And we can find out what Y is. We'll just call this equals Y, right? We don't know what that is yet. We wanna know what the Y is when X is five. So we wind up with five squared minus 10 times five plus 24 is gonna equal our Y. So we've got 25 minus 50 plus 24 equals Y. 25 minus 50 is negative 25 plus 24 is just negative 1 equals y. So our vertex is 5, negative 1. And so when we want to graph that, we have everything we need now. And I said this is rough. It doesn't have to be a good graph. The only thing we have to accommodate for is each of our points. So we know that we have a point at Let's do it a different color so it stands out at four. And we know we have a point at six. And we know our axis of symmetry is at five, right? How do I know I have a point on, on the X axis here at four and six? Because that's what we get when we solve a quadratic. We're telling us where are the points on the X axis. Right, so when y equals zero, that's why they're set equal to zero. So I know I have a point here, and I know I have my axis of symmetry here at five, and then at five, negative one. So right here, I'm going to have another point. That is my vertex, right? I'm going to label it five, negative one. Those are the only points I need to graph this, right? Now I can just go like that, right? Now on a smaller graph, if I had all those points closer together, it'd probably go up a little higher faster, but I spread my points out so that you could, could see them. But that's all we need when graphing, right? We have our two X values, our axis of symmetry, our folding point, right? Our vertex always will lie on the axis of symmetry. So it gives us the X value of our axis of symmetry. When we plug it in, we get the Y value. And we've got the only three points that we need to graph a parabola. Does that make some sense to you? Do you understand that? I know you don't have a mic today, but. Yeah, um, I've got two more examples. Um, 
I think I'm going to do the harder example for you. And if you're still getting it after the harder example, we'll let go of the other one because the other one's similar to the one we just did. Um, but if you need more, I've, I can I can do as many problems as as you want. Really. But let's do a more difficult example. Um, because we're not going to have as even a numbers in our in our solutions. So if we have seven x squared minus two x minus five equals y, right? The first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use solve the using the quadratic formula, right? Which means we have to have it set equal to zero. So we're saying when y equals zero. Right. And for that, it's already in standard form. We just need to know that our A equals seven and our B equals negative two and our C equals negative five. Right. And then we can plug that in to our formula X minus B plus or minus B squared minus four AC over two A. When we plug those in, we get x equals minus negative 2 plus or minus negative 2 squared. I always put these in parentheses so I don't forget to square the negative times 7 times negative 5. And all of this is going over 2 times a, which is 2 times 7. Now we're going to take our baby steps to solve it. Negative times negative 2 is just positive 2 plus or minus 2 squared is 4. Um, negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20 times 7 is 140. And we got this going on. So here this becomes 2 plus or minus. 144 over 14. This really isn't that difficult, right? Because we know that 144 is 12. The square root of 144 is 12. So we have 2 plus or minus 12 over 14. And we just have to figure out what those numbers are, right? We just have to break that fraction down a little bit. So 2 plus 12 is 14, right? Divided by 14, well, that's just 1. 2 minus 12 is negative 10 over 14. And when we break that down, it becomes negative 5 halves. So our two x values, our x's are 1 and negative 5 halves. So we're good for that right now. Now we just need to go back and we need to find that axis of symmetry and our vertex. And our axis of symmetry is minus b over 2a. So that's negative, negative 2 over 2 times 7, right? Which is 2 over 14, which is just 1 7. Right? That is our axis of symmetry. It is also the x value of our vertex. So our x value is 1 7th. We need to find what our y value is. Right, And the way we find what our y value is is we just plug in x. We have 7x squared. Well, that's 7 times 1 7th squared minus 2 times 1 7th, everywhere there's an x, we just put in 1 7th, minus 5 equals y. And this is where it gets a little crazy, right? Because I have to square this, so I get 7 times 1 over 49, right? 1 squared is just 1, 7 squared is 49, minus 2 7th, minus 5 equals y. Now I have to multiply this 7 through, right? So I get 7 49ths minus 2 7ths minus 5 equals y. Do I have to write it this many times? Always no. 
but I want to show you every single step. 740 nights can be reduced, right? If I divide both by seven, I get one seventh minus two sevenths. Well, here we have minus five. We need that to be seven. So if I multiply five times seven, I get 35 over seven equals y. And so now all I have to do is go, well, one minus two is negative one. Minus 35 is negative 36 over seven equals y. That is my vertex minus 36 over seven. And remember how I said this stuff doesn't have to be pretty, right? When we're doing it, because we are just doing a sketch of a graph. We're not doing an exact graph. We just kind of need a general understanding of where these points lie. So if I have a graph here, Right? And we can call this one and this, ne we'll call this one, we'll call this negative one. Um, we know we have a point on this graph at one. That doesn't stand up very well. Let's do it in blue at one. We also know we have a point at negative five halves. Well, that's like negative two and a half, right? So, oops, I'm going to use orange on that. So at negative 2.5, so we're going to say right here, right? About halfway between the two and three mark, right? If this was, if this is negative two, this is negative three, negative five and a half is going to be between those two. Right. Our next point that we need to put in is our axis of symmetry. And we're saying that the axis of symmetry is at one seventh. That seems wrong, though. That doesn't seem like the middle point. Minus five halves, that's right. One, I feel like this should be negative one seventh. I don't know why. But it's saying that we have a point at our axis of symmetry is at one seventh. I want to check the numbers on that real quick. Axis of symmetry, one seventh. Oh, that's why, because this is negative five sevenths, not negative five halves. That's where my error was. And if this is negative five sevenths, that is a point in here instead. It's not a point over here. Like that doesn't look like the middle, right? When I did the, When I was doing the original one at negative five and a half, I'm like, that's not the middle of those two. So we have a point here that is more like the middle, right? This axis of symmetry is supposed to be a straight line, but it doesn't look very straight because I drew it terribly, but you get the idea. The only thing we have left to put on is our vertex. And if you look at our vertex, we know it's going to be on this one seven. Um, negative 36 sevenths is just a little bit over more than negative five. So it's going to be down here. If this was negative five, right, we would say the point is about right here on that axis of symmetry. And we don't have to be specific where it is because we can just write it as the point. We can go, well, it's this is point one seven, negative 36 sevenths, right? And then we can draw our picture. That's what I mean by it's just a sketch. Just make sure that you have your axis of symmetry drawn, right? But we know what those points are because they're listed right here. Um, if that makes any sense to you at all. 
So aside from me reducing my fraction poorly, it should, it should be pretty simple, right? You just have to find those three points, right? Two you find just using the quadratic equation. And then you use your axis of symmetry to find the x value of your vertex. And then you plug that into the equation to find the y value of your vertex. And you have your three points. And you just plot those points and connect them with a smooth curve. Um, that's really all there is to it. It's just sometimes your solutions are going to be uglier than others. But it doesn't matter because we're not asking you to plot them exact, right? You just want a general idea. Which point is on this side? Which point is on this side? Where's the vertex between them? Um, do you feel good about that? Do you think you can uh, handle all that? I'm going to stop sharing because I'm not going to do any more um, examples for the video, but I'm, I'm, I'll, I can still answer any questions that you have.